As the rift within Comelec widens and deepens, how should the agency address questions over the integrity of its decision over the disqualification cases against Marcos Jr.? That big question and more with Attorney Howard Calleja, lawyer for martial law survivors. Attorney Calleja, welcome to The Big Story. Uh, good evening at uh, good evening sa inyong mga televiewers. Good evening po sa lahat. Hmm. Uh, Attorney Calleja, first of all, let me get uh, something, something clear. Uh, because uh, uh, Commissioner Ferolino is saying, I'm being accused of being ca causing the delay when in fact there is no delay. Could we settle that first? Is there in fact a delay? Oh, claro naman po yon, no? Let me just uh, put things in order. Uh, January 7, we had the preliminary conference. We were ordered, uh, ito claro lang po ito, uh, hmm. we were ordered 48 hours, no? to submit our memorandum. So, linggong-linggo po yun. Nag-submit po kami ng memorandum 12 noon. Ginawa po namin yun sa deadline na, sa deadline na in-impose ni Ferolino at saka ni Guanzon, no? Uh, Commissioner Ferolino and Guanzon. So, ang klaro naman din po doon is that uh, after we have submitted, dapat yan 10 days, they could have uh, already finished, no? Uh, their decision. That, that, that's in their internal rules. Ngayon, kung sasabihin nila, it was um, it was uh, raffled one day after. So, dapat 10 days after the raffle. So, uh, I would also like to take exception dun sa letter ni Ferolino na uh, June 14 lang submitted for resolution. I would like to question that because I I know for a fact that uh, we submitted uh, all our documents uh, January 9. Mm. Uh, as, I, as I said, that is a Sunday at uh, 12 noon. They, they asked us... Uh, in pain of uh, not accepting our memorandums that they that we submitted it and then nagraffle sila the next day which is January 10 so dapat January 10 uh, submitted na yan for resolution because yun yung day of raffle nila eh. Okay, well, in any case po, ito na po tayo, February 1 na bukas, February 2, retirado na po si Commissioner Guanson at mabab mababali wala ang kanyang uh, separate uh, opinion. What options do you actually have beyond February 2? Well, sa amin naman kasi, being the lawyer, we will just wait for it and uh, we will, um, um, although sa tingin namin talagang there is um, uh, undue delay and, and uh, with whatever is the revelation, I would say uh, at this point, malicious delay, um, I would like to hope and trust that uh, still there is cold neutrality with this case well, with regards to the commissioners. No, um, I would not like to insinuate anything, but... Uh, I think the the sooner they release it, the better uh, it is for the Filipino people. Anyway, whoever is not satisfied with the decision, well, they can always uh, seek remedies. No, there's always a legal remedy if they're not satisfied with the decision. What is important is we have a decision and we can proceed from there. Yes, but Attorney Galia, let me just clarify something. You said two things. You said you do not want to impute anything. But earlier, I mean, just a few sentences before that, you did say you would, uh, you would now deem this as malicious delay. How do you reconcile yeah, those two? A, I, would say there, I, I would say that there is malicious delay, but I wouldn't say that, uh, or I wouldn't um, go as far as saying there is some uh, pressure or some, um, some uh, uh, let's say, uh, persons behind this. Maybe the delay can be because... Uh, one commissioner is not as uh, as uh, savvy in writing the decision, or maybe is uh, not as fast uh, in writing the decision. But nonetheless, as I said, if we can do it in 48 hours, and I'm sure we also have at as, as much load that they do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I run a law office, and we do have a lot of cases, so I don't see any reason why they cannot do it within the time that they have set among themselves uh, for to finish the case. Okay, maraming salamat po, Attorney Calieja. That was Attorney Howard Calieja, lawyer for martial law victims and one of the petitioners in this case. But is there really a basis for Commissioner Guanson's fear that her vote will not be counted? If we base it on a precedent, then the answer is yes. In 2001, in the case of Dumayas versus Comelec, Commissioners Manolo Gorospe and Japal Giani retired before the Comelec and Bank decided on an election protest in Iloilo. The Supreme Court cited an earlier case, Jamil versus Komilek, where it held that a decision becomes binding only after promulgation. 
The Supreme Court also said if a voting judge or member of the court has vacated office at the time of promulgation, the vote is automatically withdrawn. So what does this mean for Commissioner Guanzon? If the promulgation comes after February 2, her vote might automatically be withdrawn or cancelled. The votes that will count are those cast by the new commissioners.